Let's talk a little bit about Thaddeus Young and the values that he's going to bring to the defensive side of the floor for the Suns, which is the side of the ball that I feel he will have the most impact on. And it's the ability to add positional as well as scheme versatility to everything that the Suns are doing on that end of the floor. And his activity is going to pop up off film, maybe even more than anything else. But my favorite parts of what he's going to add to the t bring to the table for the Suns is going to be his abilities and understanding of positioning, his anticipation within that positioning, and how oftentimes that, in addition to his ability to slide his feet and stay chest to chest in front of players, whether that be in rotation or on the ball, is going to be just such a such a piece in connecting and just containing things and flattening out actions for the Suns. So let's just dive into a little bit of his film and talk about what's been going on on defense for him. First play, we're going to see a quick handoff and pausing it here. Clearly, he's being matched up with Chet Holmgren, one of the most versatile pieces in the NBA, one of the better drivers at the center position as well. So obviously anticipating that, seeing that the they're getting into this little bit of weave action to get Chet Holmgren going downhill with their five-out spacing. Watch out that young just kind of neutralizes everything with anticipation. Now we're gonna see him get the steal afterwards. But this is just very, very much a veteran move in terms of just kind of backpedaling as you see Holmgren getting into, into his drive. Watch how Thaddeus Young mirrors his feet with Chet Holmgren's. And this is something that is just a really, a really detailed skill that he has. And this is how he's able to just stay keeping his chest in front of Holmgren all the way. Then the ability to absorb the hit while backpedaling and then ultimately get the steal. This is something that we see a lot from Josh Okoji out on the perimeter. When players are driving and trying to get into his chest, he doesn't allow them to dictate with that and also keeps himself from picking up a lot of fouls in that manner. And we see that exactly here with Thaddeus Young ultimately getting the steal from Holmgren in isolation and then the Raptors on the break. And then here we see the Celtics getting into some of their action with the center with Plumlee Flowing into a handoff with Kawhi Leonard in the empty corner. Kawhi's going to turn the corner. And watch how that Young neutralizes everything. Again, this is all off of just positioning. That extra slide keeps Kawhi from getting through the nail and ultimately into the paint, which is what he's attempting to do in this space. That Young, that extra slide from here to here to completely take away that angle and ultimately make him terminate his dribble helps to get an initial stop to action, flattens that out. And now we're gonna see as he's a very good 45 cut here to create new space from Terrence Mann. That's ultimately gonna see the Clippers re-spacing. And look at that, he's young, going from a rolling, guarding the initial big here, stopping the drive from Kawhi Leonard. And now toggling to a completely different, not just role defensively in terms of the team scheme, but also matchup. Now he's guarding Terrence Mann on this 45 cut as we see the Clippers respace. And look at his attention to detail, how he's reading everything that's going on on the primary side of the ball. How he's ultimately gonna, again, with positioning, but the anticipation that comes with that positioning, is able to get himself right in space for vertical rim contest on the plum lead cut to the basket, and the Raptors are gonna again be out on the break. And here we're seeing them with Zubach from sideline out of bounds. They're using their centers again. Excuse me. They're using their centers again to flow into action, delay action here. And just look at how he, on the catch, on the touch, he's right at, he's right there closing the airspace on the catch. A lot of times opponents will concede that space to centers and that allows for teams to get into these handoff scenarios with a lot more ease and not necessarily have to worry about the connectedness being, being uh, disconnected, honestly in the action. And we see that is Young not conceding any airspace, staying attached to the hip in legal guarding position and being active with that offhand as well, in addition to all else. And ultimately we're gonna see because of that, he's gonna be able to disrupt flow and ultimately get a steal here. Little things that he's gonna bring to the table for the Suns on the defensive side of the floor. And then here, again, we talk about positioning, talk about positioning, look at the communication initially now he's guarding Gigi Jackson, who's respacing to the second side of the floor here. And you can see Gigi with the yellow with the yellow shoes respacing to the weak side of the floor. You see the communication here between him and Bruce Brown, or Scotty Barnes rather. 
And now we're going to see that is you know, just loading up, knowing that, okay, Jaron Jackson Jr. has the ball in delay action here at the top of the key. Just like Sabonis and a few other players, he wants to get to his left hand. So what does he do in terms of positioning and anticipation? He sets up shot and pitches a tent at that left at that left block. Obviously, knowing Jaron Jackson wants to get there, Jaron Jackson gets the catch and immediately gets into the drive, and there's nothing there. Action's flattened out, but in addition to his position and his anticipation of anticipation of it, he's also active in it and is able to get the steal. Raptors again going to be out on the break. And then here, more of the same. Now he's guarding Jaron Jackson directly. He's going to be up to touch at the screen with Luke Kennard coming off. And he's going to end up getting in a drop. He's getting in a drop for one because this is Luke Kennard going to his right hand. And then in addition to that, he's trusting the guard and Gary Trent Jr. to navigate. He's not in a super, super deep drop, especially coming from up to touch and then reverting back. But he's in just enough space to give Luke Kennard something to think about. And as he tries to get into the snake dribble to flatten out action, they do a great job in communication and feel in drop coverage here. Ultimately getting back and not conceding the late switch, which is what Kennard was looking for as he tried to string action out. That is young, never fully commits, allow for Gary Trent Jr. to get back in action as they try to set up a pick and roll into a post for Jaron Jackson Jr. We're going to just watch only Thaddeus Young here and how he jumps to the ball side in denial and ultimately makes that angle tough to get to, ultimately nothing to steal. And look at how he's first to the deflection, off of positioning and anticipation again, and then also able to get the 50-50 the loose ball in addition to that. Raptors going to be on the break again. He's starting to see a common theme with a lot of the things going on with that. He's on the defensive side of the floor. We see him now up the line in pressure. They're trying to get the ball over to that, uh, excuse me, over to Julius Randle. He's up the line, so that's not there. They're bleeding away the shot clock from the Knicks. Now we see them ultimately getting the pick and roll. It's late clock, so they're in red. They're getting the switch, and they're going to see him on McBride, one-on-one -on -one in isolation. And look at how, again, like I talked about in the opening, different matchup, same context, though. He's mirroring the feet of the opponent while also impacting the ball. So we see him impact the ball here with this subtle jab bat, just breaks the rhythm, makes him a little bit uncomfortable, forces retreat dribbles, and now watch him mirror step for step. Every move that McBride is making, step for step, he's right on schedule with it, ultimately not conceding any airspace. And then in addition to all of that, the anticipatory skill to be able to get the hand up and ultimately get another steal off of deflection. And the Raptors are on the break. And then here, we're gonna see this time he's gonna be off ball initially. And we see him just playing kind of drop coverage off of that wide pin here from Bam Adebayo for Duncan Robinson. But you just, you can't play with the ball when Thaddeus is young is around. His hands are too quick and they're too strong. A lot like if Chris Paul was a big and you are were playing with the ball in his face uh, when he's around defensively, you're just not gonna get away with it with Thaddeus Young. That's always gonna be a steal. That's exactly what he gets there. And then here on this rep, we're gonna see him guarding Porzingis now. And the, before we even get into the action to come, we're just gonna look at him with the little things in terms of defensively, his positioning, and how he just makes things tougher on opponents. We talked about in this written piece, how he struggles with guarding centers. A lot of the times it's when they get catches closer to the basket, but the further away from the basket they are, the more he's able to neutralize and flatten out action with his early work he does in positioning, but also his anticipatory skill and activity with his hands and feet. We see here, Porzingis trying to get to this post up in secondary break here at the nail. You see the positioning he initially gets, but look at where he is on the flight of the pass and where before, as he starts to get into action, he's ultimately going to start getting into it. So that initially, he had Thaddeus Young, in addition to Porzingis, his feet were on the free throw line and Thaddeus Young was in the paint. By the time the catch comes and Porzingis gets into his positioning for triple threat, Thaddeus Young's feet are now outside the free throw line and Porzingis is pushed off of his base. Just the little things that help him flatten out and neutralize actions. In addition to what we're going to see with him anticipating and being able to get his hand up to contest the passing angle for this pass from Porzingis, ultimately getting the steal. Raptors again out on the break. And then here again with the Clippers, he's guarding Zubac. They try to get into a little bit of slice action. Does a good job navigating that, gets there on the catch. 
And now watch him work in the post. You don't going to get too many dribbles off with that is young and not have it poked away or for your rhythm to be thrown off. And that's exactly what he does here with Zubac. Raptors again on the break. And then lastly, looking at the values that he's bringing on the defensive side. We talk about his positioning, talk about his anticipatory skill. He also has the ability to apply that in passing lanes. And we see the Lakers getting into an action they get into often. They go horns. They're going to have Austin Reeves set a ghost screen for LeBron James to ultimately receive a flare screen on the backside of horns from Anthony Davis. And they try to flow into action from there with pace, getting one of their best movement players in movement. That is young with his anticipation and also be a, being able to quickly process what's going on from the opponent's offense, sees the ghost screen occurring and sees that there's not, there's the, there's not the requisite level of communication for the switch between Scotty Barnes and Dennis Schroeder as Schroeder tries to get into a short recover. Very good job in fundamentals with Austin Reeves in terms of flowing into this. And you see the, the separation that it creates in addition to having Scotty Barnes and Dennis Schroeder run into each other. But look at that as young, like a safety, jumping his passing lane, not tipping his hand too soon, knowing that LeBron wants to get this ball over to Austin Reeves. That's where the advantage has been created. Look at how he's able to revert back, ultimately jump into the passing lane, get the steal, and he's going to be out on the break for two. It's just these little things that he's going to bring to the table of consistently and in a sustainable manner being consistent with his positioning, his anticipatory skill, and his hand activity, both in the passing lanes and on the ball, in addition to him being able to slide his feet and flatten out action and keep the ball contained when centers have it. These little things are gonna really help in addition to just his general communication and his understanding of what opponents are trying to do is gonna really help to improve the Suns defensive process. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he brings to the table in real time.